Game of Thrones Season 5 review with a Season 4 recap. And why are you seeing me right now? Because we're going to talk about some spoilers and you need to know when it is that I stop talking about them and when I am talking about them. So seeing me, spoilers, not, <laughs> you get a general review. And so right now we're going to go through the last three episodes of Game of Thrones Season 4, which had some hefty twists and turns and a lot of different things happen with one nice little story in between that <clears throat> I had one hell of experience watching The Mountain and the Viper. So we're going to get into that. In my last review, I said it was the last three episodes that changed things rapidly, and I meant that. The Mountain and the Viper, Watchers on the Wall, and The Children. The Mountain and the Viper held one of the most gruesome deaths I had ever seen on TV. Furthermore, I never quite got over that, at least since the last nine months from the time that I saw it. Ooh, the things that plagued my mind. But there was so much more that happened in The Mountain and the Viper. Ramsay Snow becomes Ramsay Bolton. <laughs> Theon Greyjoy is being used by him in the weirdest way, making him pose as his former self after being brainwashed as Reek. Jorah Mormont is exiled, which sucked considering his loyalty to Daenerys. The Hound and Arya finally reach the Bloody Gate, only to find out Arya's aunt Arryn had just died, and they were just that close to, you know, finally finishing off their story arc and it looks like they're still stuck together. But it really comes down to this fight at the very end of the episode that is all the rage, all the talk, all the buzz. Seriously, this was a tense battle and a lot was at stake. But there is a story surrounding this moment, so here's the story time. So I didn't get a chance to see this episode until a day later. I do! But not before actually seeing things that I probably shouldn't have seen, and but yet I'm actually kind of glad that I heard a lot more before I actually watched it, because I heard a lot of people go, I'm not okay with what happened on Game of Thrones. And I'm thinking, oh God, what happened? I have never read the Game of Thrones books. I mean, I read the first one. I never got to this part where the mountain and the viper square off. I just never did. And I started thinking, why would you think it would cause outrage for a fight. Something happened. Someone died. It couldn't have been the mountain that died. No one would have cared. They would have been like, yes, that's what I'm talking about, Game of Thrones. You start making us happy for the good guys. You know, something like that. No. Mind you, I'm a very emotional person. I take things very, very closely and to heart. And... When it comes to violence, I'm okay with it for the most part, but when you give me gruesome deaths, when you give me a, a really decent character and have a demise that really is just over the top and really terrible, it sticks with me. It, it, it really does something to me, and unfortunately, that's exactly what happened in this fight scene. So I'm finally back at home, I get to this computer, I watch it online, and I just watch everything unfold in front of me. Every mo beat for beat for beat that I just told you about, everything kind of went together as it planned and then it came down to this fight and you know that Tyrion just before all this exploded in the court saying I've been a dwarf my entire life and I'm being judged for it and I demand a trial by combat it was like wow this is not gonna end well for Tyrion but you finally get a champion for Tyrion and now here it is this square off because Cersei chose the mountain Tyrion had a volunteer Oberyn Martell and you're finally here to see it, and I'll be damned if I was shaking already before the fighting started. This guy is out of this world, he is great with a spear, he is twirling, he's twisting, the cuts are a little jarring, but I really loved how quickly this guy moved. It was wonderful to see all that. I was like, you know what, maybe there's some hope for this, but the air is thick, you know, so I'm still kind of on guard here. He's trying to get the mountain to confess, the mountain's like, oh, he doesn't care who he is or what he's doing, he is going to look to kill him, and it's just not working because the Viper's quick as shit. But you then you finally get to the finale of this fight, and the finale of the fight is Oberyn winning. He is winning the shit out of this. He's stabbing him, he's crushing him, he's gooding him. Oh god, I just had to say the word crush. <laughs> <laughs> you get to this point where, you know, Oberyn wants a confession out of the mountain based off of past things that the mountain has done. Oberyn gets way too close. He gets way too cocky and demanding. And sure enough, mountain gets the drop on him. And the rest, I'm not even going to show you in footage. You're just going to have to listen to me describe it. Mm. Mountain trips him up. 
grabs his face, punches it, his teeth fly out, and then he just slays him down, gets in between him like a lover would. The mountain just gets over his face, takes his thumbs, and then just starts pressing into his eyes, gouging his eyes out. And then not long afterwards, you just hear the sickening thud of a crush. And I kid you not, this was my literal reaction as soon as the popping sound of Ober and Martell's skull getting crushed. <gasps> Anxiety rushed from here to my arm. I felt that and went straight here and my hand was like this for at least 10 minutes. Of course, when I let out that scream, my mom's upstairs going, what happened? And I'm like, uh, mocking me back. Uh. I'm like, I'm, I'm fine. I couldn't breathe. <laughs> and then like not even that long afterwards, mom's like, come eat. And that just killed me. I need a break from this show. <laughs> But overall, that was my experience. Um, Tyrion screwed over, Oberyn got too cocky and got himself killed. And I waited out the last two episodes and then went, you know, I'm kind of done with Game of Thrones. I'm kind of done. So that's my story. Unfortunately, it was a lot longer than I wanted to tell. I do apologize for that, but that's exactly what happened throughout my experience. So let's move on. From there we go into the Watch of the Wall, which features one big battle between the Wildlings and the Night's Watch. Ygritte dying was something worth mentioning, if not seen coming a mile away. The Night's Watch wins the battle, but the war was still coming, so Jon Snow decides to head out and confront the king beyond the wall himself, Mance Radar, and he's gonna go and kill him himself. Only for the next episode, the children follow up that very same moment to where Jon Snow goes to confront Mance, and they are immediately interrupted by Stannis Baratheon crashing the party. And Stannis meets Jon Snow for the first time. And that was very interesting. I was like, what? People are finally meeting each other here? Hey! But overall, it was still a plot point that wasn't ready to be explored yet because that's all season five territory. And here we're just, you know, yeah, this is all set up again. But I know what I said, this is where the episode trailed off in excitement for me. And I said the episode was adapting to the newness coming about. This was in reference to Tyrion killing his lover Shay and his father Tywin, both whom deserve the wrath of Tyrion. But it was not until like right after this, this kind of nonchalantly makes its way through to the next big thing. Tyrion leaving the capital. The part of this story just politely hums its way to the next, saying, hey, we'll see you next season. And so that's what it basically does. Big shocking moment. Hmm. Big shocking moment. Hmm. The only thing I'd say that did not have any humming to the next scene was the throwdown between Brienne of Tarth and the Hound. That is your episode of Game of Thrones, everyone. Welcome to the finale. But the biggest development was Bran finally reaching where he wanted to be, reaching into the heart tree and searching for the three-eyed raven. They make it there, but not in one piece, and not before they are losing one, the Jojen Reed guy who helped him there in the first place. And in the end, Bran is told he will never walk again, but he will fly. But alas, when we move on to season five, Bran's story isn't in season five. How strange is that? So with all that said, that's my spoiler review for the last three episodes of season four. I tried to cover as much as I could with my story of my traumatic event with the mountain and the viper. I do hope you guys enjoyed. We're going to move on to season five now and you won't see me anymore. In any case, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let's move on to season five. My review for season five will be a general one, and I won't cover every character and every little thing. With that said, let's get into the biggest things that were important to me and what was worth noting. Okay, first off, right off the bat, no brand is noticeable throughout the seasons. You are left wondering, what is he learning and what is he doing? But nevertheless, it continues the rest of the storylines, bringing in new situations now that the War of the Five Kings has ended. In King's Landing, the sparrows rise up claiming to do God's work. The High Sparrow takes control by imposing their puritanical views upon King's Landing. They imprison a lot of people, uh, and especially their royal families like certain members of the Tyrells, and even forcing Cersei to confess her sins and shaming her. Arya Stark's storyline takes an interesting turn as she arrives in Bravos and begins training with the Faceless Men. By this point, she has a clear goal and objective and has been pining to kill all the people that has wronged 
belonging to her and her family. It's at this point where we're watching her train to become an assassin of sorts to accomplish that. Then we finally get a new side of Essos, or Essos, I can't really pronounce it right because I'm an American. Dorne, in the aftermath of Oberyn Martell's death, his wife and three bastard daughters seek vengeance for his death. This was the more exciting aspect for many Game of Thrones fans as we got to see a much different culture. But ultimately, I must say, this is where the most disappointing factor of this show came about. All right, so the good. There is so many good aspects in this season that I absolutely loved. The show is reaching new levels of interaction where characters are meeting that you never thought would meet. It truly adds in a wonderful flavor. Tyrion and Daenerys meeting would be a perfect example to start. I won't reveal how or why they meet in the first place, but when it does, it's bound to make one giddy. Jorah Mormont's exile was an interesting aspect in Danny's storyline. Jorah won't give up trying to be in Danny's life. It's pretty inspirational. Jon's storyline is incredibly engaging and taxing as he has to convince a lot of people to work with him and fight with him due to the rising threat of the White Walkers. The episode Hardhome has one of the finest and surprising endings I had seen in a while. The High Sparrow storyline borderlines an interesting to downright annoying as it screeches things to a halt and forces most of our characters to become in a more vulnerable state and manipulated. It allows to see new shades of the characters, in some good and in some bad, but don't get me wrong when I say it's a slower storyline for sure. In the end, season 5 held some questionable things for me, and now we are reaching the bad. The bad holds some character deaths that I didn't feel were necessary, even if there was a point. I won't dive into spoilers, but a few characters hit some rough patches, and it caused controversy, and some others die, and you're just like, why? That person could have clearly survived. Why did you kill him off? Biggest gripe I had in this season was not comparing any of the show's material to the books, but the Sand Snakes were just unremarkable. The girls were talented for sure, but they were not written well. All in all, this season was a mixed bag of good and bad. Season 5 held some great interactions between characters we finally get to see meet for the first time. Some character deaths I felt were a bit necessary. There was a very nice, unexpected battle that I felt was badass and amazing. Some slower storylines I felt should have had a tad bit more exciting elements and themes in it, but the aspect of Dorne I felt could have been written a lot better. For all in all, I'm going to give Game of Thrones Season 5 a B-. Minus. Stay tuned for my Season 6 review coming out next week. I'll be talking about the spoilers of Season 5 and all the little stuff that came with it. And then Season 6, you'll get a general review. So, if you like this video and want to see more, please subscribe. And if you'd consider liking this video, it'll help me know that I am doing well. Thank you so much for watching. Spread the word and I'll get you more videos in the future.